How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be breaking down my top 10 favourite Irish Rebel songs of all time. For those of you that haven't been following me for the last while, I've been doing a series called the Top Irish Rebel Songs. They're just basically 60 second videos of my favourite Irish Rebel songs. I break down who wrote them, what the song was about, all that kind of stuff. So right now it's the 22nd of December 2022 and so far I've done 10 episodes. So I'm going to show you all 10 of these episodes all in a row so you can watch them back to back. It's actually funny for me to go back and watch the earlier videos because you can see how awkward I am. I didn't really know what I was doing. I had this rough idea of I'd love to do a series on Rebel songs. So I find episode one especially is just awkward. You can see the awkwardness in my face. I was winging the whole episode even though I knew all the information. I didn't have any structure. I didn't really know what I was doing essentially. But as the videos go on they get better and better. So I hope you enjoy it. This is my top 10 Irish Rebel songs of all time. Enjoy. Here's the top Irish rebel songs of all time, part one. The story behind this first song brings us back to 1920 in Dublin, Ireland. This song was written by Dominic Behan as a tribute to his father who fought in the Irish Civil War and the War of Independence. This song was written about the dispute between Republican and Unionist neighbours in Dublin's inner city. The most notable recording of this song was by the Wolf Tones, which was released in 1972. And the song is called Come Out Ye Black and Tans. I was born on the Dublin street where the loyal drums the beat and those loving English feet they walked all over us and every single night when me da would come home tight he'd invite the neighbours out with his chorus Come out you black and tans Come out and fight me like a man Show your wife how you won medals down in Flanders Tell her how the IRA made you run like hell away this is the top Irish rebel songs, part two. This song is written about the aftermath of the 1916 Easter Rising. Between 1914 to 1918, there was a split between the Irish volunteers. Approximately 210,000 Irish men joined forces with the British Empire to fight in World War I. This created a lot of mixed feelings in Ireland. In April of 1916, Irish patriots James Connolly and Patrick Pearce took advantage of the fact that Britain were preoccupied with World War I. They seized some of the major buildings in Dublin city, which included the GPO. And this started a brutal battle that lasted six days. The week after the rising, the leaders of the movement were executed in Kilmainham jail. Canon O'Neill wrote The Foggy Jew, commemorating these brave Irish men that rose out against the British Empire and fought for Ireland. Twas better to die neat that Irish sky than at Solva or Sodelbar. This song is called The Foggy Jew. This is the best Irish rebel songs, part 3. This song was written by Belfast musician Paddy McGuigan and it was released by his band Barleycorn in December of 1971. This song hit number 1 in the Irish charts one month after its release. And subsequently this song was recorded by many other Irish artists such as the Wolf Tones, Liam Clancy and the Flying Column. The lyrics of this song describe the heavy handedness approach of the British soldiers during the troubles in Northern Ireland in the 70s. A lyric example is armoured cars and tanks and guns. The men behind the wire refers to the men that were held without charge at Long Cash Prison Camp in Mays County Down, about 10 miles south of Belfast. So as the time frame and the lyrics suggest, this song is about the troubles in Northern Ireland between Irish Republican Catholics and Unionist Protestants about whether Northern Ireland should leave the UK and become a united Ireland or not. This song is called Men Behind the Wire. This is the top Irish rebel songs, part 4. Now there are some conflicting theories as to whether that this is a rebel song or not. First of all, this is a love song and is a beautiful but sad love song between Joseph Mary Plunkett and his wife Grace Gifford. This song was written in 1985 by Sean and Frank O'Mara and the storyline brings us back to 1916 Ireland. Joseph Mary Plunkett was executed on the 4th of May 1916 in Kilmainham Jail in Dublin. This was just hours after marrying his wife Grace Gifford. Joseph was executed for his involvement in the 1916 Easter Rising in Dublin, which gives this song its rebel roots. And although this is a heartbreaking love song, this song has rebel roots from the start about a man that was willing to die for his country. This song is called Grace. Oh, Grace just hold me in your arms And let this moment linger They'll take me out to dawn And I will die This is the top Irish rebel songs. 
Part 5. This song was written by Bobby Sands while he was imprisoned in H.M. May's Her Majesty's Prison Maze, previously known as Long Kesh Prison Camp in Mays County Down. This prison was used to house alleged paramilitary prisoners during the Troubles in the north of Ireland from 1971 to 2000. The storyline behind this song brings us back to the aftermath of the 1803 Irish Rebellion when Irish rebels were relocated to Australia. The lyrics describe their rough conditions as these Irish rebels sailed out to sea and how they longed for their home in Derry. The song also mentions the death of Irish Republican leader Robert Robert Emmett with these lyrics. O'Doherty screamed woken out of a dream by the vision of bold Robert dying. Bobby Sands describes at the end of the song that even after 20 years of trials, he would never give in. 20 years have gone by and I've ended my bond, my comrades ghost walk beside me. This song is called Back Home in Derry. This is the top Irish rebel songs. Part 6. Like many old traditional Irish songs, the exact origins of this song are actually unknown. However, it does trace back to the late 1800s and it was often sang at the bringing home of a wife. This was a ceremony that used to happen in Ireland a month after a wedding when a bride would move in with her new husband. In the early 1900s, this song received new verses by Irish poet and Irish Republican leader Padraig Pearce. This song was chanted by Irish volunteers during the 1916 Easter Rising and the Irish War of Independence. Padraig Pearce himself would call this song On Dord Fena, which means Call of the Fight. In Podrick's lyrics he mentions Grace O'Malley, otherwise known as the Great Sea Warrior of the West Coast of Ireland. This is hands down one of the best Irish rebel songs of all time. This is called O Roche de Bahawalia. This is the top Irish rebel songs. Part 7. This song was written by Belfast musician Paddy McGuigan. You might remember Paddy McGuigan from episode 3, Men Behind the Wire. He also wrote this song. This song was written about the Irish Republican Army during the Irish War of Independence and the anniversary of the 1916 Easter Rising. The storyline of this song describes an Irish veteran of the 1916 Easter Rising, describing to a young man his experiences in the Irish Republican Army. Every chorus in the song ends with A Graw McCree, I long to see the boys of the old brigade. My favourite lyric in this song is Twasn't long ago we faced the foe the old brigade and me, and by my side they fought and died that Ireland might be free. This song is called The Boys of the Old Brigade. This is the top Irish rebel songs, part 8. This song was written by Padder Carney. Padder was an Irish Republican man and also a member of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. Padder was an uncle of Dominic and Brendan Behan. You might remember Dominic Behan from episode 1. He wrote Come Out Ye Black and Tans. So rebel songs definitely run in this family's blood. He wrote this song in around the time of the 1916 Easter Rising. However, in this song, he refers back to the earlier Fenian Rising of 1867. In this song, he speaks about meeting an old woman down by the Glenside and she was singing the lyrics, Glory O, Glory O, to the bold Fenian men. Popular versions of this song have been covered by the Dubliners, Jim McCann and the Wolf Tones. This song is called Down by the Glenside. Glory O, to the bold Fenian men. This is the top Irish rebel songs. Part 9. This song is written about the events that took place in April and May of 1921 in Knockinure, County Kerry. On Thursday the 7th of April 1921, IRA member Mick Galvin accidentally walked through a black and tan ambush and he was shot and killed. Exactly one week later, on Thursday the 14th of April 1921, Mick's fellow IRA men raided Kilmorna House to get revenge for Mick's death. Kilmorna House was the home of Sir Arthur Vickers at the time. The IRA men burnt the house to the ground and executed Arthur in the garden. This was a sweet revenge for the IRA men, however, what happened a month later changed everything. A month later, on the 21st of May, a group of black and tans were travelling through Nakanyor. They came past a group of four young Irish boys and decided to execute them. Drunk in rage and in seek of revenge, they lined the four boys up to be shot. First to be shot was Jerry Lyons, they then shot Paddy Dalton and Paddy Walsh. Fourth young Irishman by the name of Con D just witnessed his three friends get executed in front of him. He thought, he's gonna die anyway, he may as well try and run for his life. Con D took off sprinting through the field, he was immediately shot in the leg. However, he managed to stay running and he kept running for three miles and he never got found. Con D continued to stay in hiding and was never found by the Black and Tans. And the song that's written about these events is called The Valley of Knockinure. Hill, 
This is the top Irish rebel songs. Part 10. This is one of the most important songs in Irish history. This song was written in the year 1910 by Padder Carney and Patrick Heaney. Padder wrote the lyrics and Patrick composed the music. Even though this song is most commonly known today in the Irish language, originally it was actually written in English. And the original name of this was the Soldier Song. Padder wrote the original English lyrics of this song in the Swiss Cafe on O'Connell Street in Dublin. This song immediately became very popular with the Irish volunteers and it was actually sang in the GPO during the 1960s. Easter Rising. The song's popularity in the early 1900s actually led it to being called the Sinn Féin Anthem. The song's first commercial recording was in 1917 in New York City and funnily enough British forces actually confiscated copies of the song because it went against their governing authority. And how did Ireland react to that? Well we made the song our national anthem. This is Auron Naveen aka the Soldier Song. Shall the panny or 